Hey everybody, it's your hospitality friend Glenn here reporting from the show floor at High Tech thanks to the amazing people over at Unifocus Technology that delivers. Do me a favor, check them out, unifocus.com. I got Adam Ogolonski here, long time friend, first time interview in this format, man. What the you hell know, have I been thinking for the last 15 years? Well, I mean, we were just both so busy that we're like, you're over here, right. I'm over <laughs> here, and then... Y you know, I'm over in North America, and you're probably off uh, yeah. doing doing interviews I'm in Florida or somewhere. Vegas or Orlando because I'm on the conference. So yeah, I mean, all like I'm going that's the that's the the beauty of this industry is that it, it is worldwide, and it is. We just we're we're, we're, we're probably on a plane going like this, yeah. just crossing in the sky. We can wave at one another. Right? So, as a as a consultant in the hospitality space, have we got technology figured out yet? <laughs> Yes, we have, but the whole thing is that hotels and hospitality is the most complicated industry on the planet. Right. From a from a labor operations perspective, there's so much happening, and then you're dealing with these... Take that, airlines. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, you know, the, the whole thing with an airline is the, somebody's seated down, and then it's basically a social contract where it's like, be on your best behavior or else yep. the FAA is not going to let you fly anymore, yeah. versus a hotel, mm -hmm. you don't have that social contract so you can complain you yeah. can make special requests you can get out of your hotel room yeah. at three in the morning and start wandering the halls and doing all these things so were you with were you were you with me last night no no i i i, I was asleep by the time the hockey game by the time the edmonton lost i was like okay, yeah. oh no too depressing <laughs> to stay awake yeah. right so i hear you yeah uh that makes a, that makes a, a whole lot of sense to to me so hmm. Being that we're finally getting a handle of technology, how can we actually go move into the future and future-proof our properties? Because it seems to me a lot of technologies come and go, or they're just supplanted by next-generation technologies. And no yeah. matter how hard we work to build a property that's got the right tech, the second you open your doors, everything changes. Right. So um, the reason why technology and, ho and hospitality has been like that to date is... Because you needed to have service all the time, and there wasn't this thing called the cloud with redundancy layers. Right. So you you had to host on prem or on your own hosted server, and you needed to work with regional players that could provide the customer service. Now, and I say now loosely, from like the last three years to the next five years, is we have democratization of technology through AI and uh, various automated workflows mm -hmm. that are going to help reduce the overall costs. You have true cloud that allows you to actually put everything online and have 24 hour service. And you have the easy setup of support centers worldwide. So that way you can, can, you can get true 24 hour support, not just saying, Oh yeah, I saw your servers went down last night. Let's have a meeting and we'll get back to you next week. Click. Right. Right. So those three things are converging to allow you to build a tech stack that is truly better, faster, cheaper. Um, and all that is happening in tandem with the AI glue, like the open APIs that are easy set up, the RPA, the RAG, things that are gonna bring you to the next level to better know your guests and all that stuff. So all that is happening simultaneously and because it's multi-input, multi-output, mm -hmm. it's very hard to exactly quantify and to give you an exact timeline in terms of when it's gonna be, oh yeah, it's here. Right, so yep. yeah, your doors are open, things are constantly gonna be changing. The most important part of your tech stack is still the human stack. The technology director the, and the, the CTO and the CIO, two different things about having that vision mm -hmm. and on the ground process yep. to reevaluate and to look at the next generation tech that is gonna be current gen within one year. One of the things that I'm most uh, afraid of, Adam, and uh, this is a, a, an issue that uh, Anthony and I discussed, we were fortunate enough and honored enough to do the uh, opening keynote speech this morning, was trying to keep humanity in the hospitality business as yeah. technology threatens to overwhelm us. How do you see a path to successfully allow people to be people and not get consumed by letting technology take the lead? Technology's already consuming us. That's mm -hmm. that's an inevitability. And that depends how you define technology. I mean, we're wearing clothing. Clothing is technically a piece of technology. Yeah. You know, glasses are technology, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, people can't live without their cell phones anymore. They're glued to Instagram, right? Yep. So technology's always gonna be here. 
What I see the future is this idea of no touch to help the high touch. Yep. So we're always going to be looking for that next little bit to automate some workflow, automate some workflow to thereby bring people yep. more and more forward and more guest facing. You know, your lips to God's ears, man. That's what, uh, that's what I want. So something simple, yes. something very simple as having a tablet based PMS and CRM device. So that way you don't no longer need the front desk. The front desk can, can become a true refreshment station where you're serving lemonade, a health drink, and then after five, a white and a red wine and, 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 a, and some beers, right? All local and, you know, what tells a good yep. story. So you have that as a refreshment station. That's your front desk. And the actual front desk clerks are out in front with a tablet. They can sign you in. Yep. They can put the tablet attached to your thing and so they can help you with your bag. So they're the bellhop as well. They can even, if you have your flight data, they can meet you out front and be the valet or coordinate with valet. So that's where we're heading and that's a very slow thing and that's brand wide because maybe the front desk you know, uh, sign in at a resort is already so elaborate and you wanna have that feeling. Right. Other ones are gonna go the kiosk route where you sign in via kiosk and then you just have a rover at yep. the lobby who's there to refresh oh, so and that'd be great so it, yeah it depends and, and and it's it's not it's it's it, it's going to happen over time because these things need to be properly evaluated because there is a risk of things going wrong and then heaven forbid you have to go back to paper and pen which is which is a nightmare and then and then you end up with uh oh it's a nightmare just start looking at my handwriting i haven't you know, i rarely write anymore so yeah i, I look like a, a serial killer when that i that or 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 uh, the c word which is chargebacks yeah right <laughs> so yeah. yeah, we don't we don't like to say those things. Yeah, this show this is a yeah. family show. Yeah, um, <laughs> I, I will tell you, we are so addicted to technology. I'm sure that this has happened to you, folks. You're having an important conversation, and your text message goes off in your pocket, and then you have to pretend like it didn't. And all you want to do is look at it, and you have to really concentrate on what the person is uh, saying. Oh, did that just happen to you? It did not this okay. time. Okay, all right, right. It happened right. when I was actively listening, and my wife and I were having a conversation the other day. And yeah. I kept being like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I got a text message. It was really so, difficult. So I, I got to recommend a book for everyone. Yeah. Is that is uh, it's a book called Indistractable by Nir Eyal. Mm -hmm. He's a you know is Israeli person, so I have to preface that you know I'm not sure how people feel about yeah uh, all that, but uh, uh, so basically is the whole idea of cell phone etiquette when you're at a workplace and and all that. So. Right now, my cell phone's in my pocket, so I know it's there. Yeah, but like having a cell phone completely out of sight and behind you is completely different. Uh -huh. And so there's going to be this whole arrangement about in-person meetings, basically saying, okay, when you're in a meeting, you're coming into a meeting with an agenda, and people are going to be, they, they may even hand out tablets and be like, okay, here's a tablet. It's not connected They're, to your right. uh, text, WhatsApp, uh, whatever other messaging, and your cell phone can stay outside. Mm -hmm. So when you're there, you're fully focused, and then that way it increases the productivity per minute of each individual meeting. That's fantastic. I love these ideas, and make sure you follow all of our continuing coverage, not just here at uh, High Tech, but in general, because we're here to give you those actionable insights you need. Best way to do that is text the word HOTEL to 66866 to get our weekly newsletter. That's Adam Bogolowski. I'm Sil Glenn Housman. We'll see you next time. Thanks.